Welcome to Mission Minded, the podcast where we explore outside the box thinking and carrying out the Great Commission. On this week's episode, we are joined by Dr. Tom McKechnie with Teach to Transform. Now here's our host, Jim Tingler. Hi, and welcome back to the iTech Podcast. We're joined today um, here in Louisville, Kentucky with Tom McKechnie. I'm Jim Tingler, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about training and specifically uh, what Tom is doing. So, hey, Tom. Hi. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, this is a a casual conversation, um, and we just want to talk a little bit about some of the work you're doing. I know you you have an interesting background and history and what it's led to today. I know it's a lot to cover, but, yeah, yeah, people love to hear it. So... uh, my name is Dr. Tom McKechnie. I'm uh, by training an emergency medicine uh, physician in Kentucky here for about the last 35 years. Private practice in, at our trauma center teaching residents. And I recently uh, retired about a year and a half ago with um, um, just my passion for missions kind of redirected my focus. Um, many people thought I was going to end up um, depressed and, and uh immobilized uh, mentally because of my, after 35 years, what do you do? But uh, kind of very clearly uh, know that my identity is in Christ. He has mm-hmm. a plan for me and it was missions. Um, so um, basically retired a year and a half ago and, and now after the past 10 years of learning how to do short-term missions, uh, I've got some clarity in what that looks like, always trying to learn. But uh, uh, my passion is uh, missions. I'm an ordained minister at Southeast Christian Church as well. So, so tell me what that looks like. You, you know, you said you're involved with missions. Mm-hmm. So, um, when I first uh, came to know Christ later in my life, <clears throat> I, um, I really felt that, uh, as I've said, uh, I had my Job moment where, where God uh, offered up Job and said, uh, "Have you considered my servant, uh, Job?" So I really uh, took that to mean God trust me with my testimony, and my testimony was uh, I was lost in darkness, pride and arrogance for a long time. Um, I wanted to be a good husband, good father, and a good doctor, and life was good. And then um, uh, my wife uh, uh, had cancer and uh, tipped my world upside down. I kept asking God, where are you in emergency medicine, all the horrible things I was seeing, and really wasn't getting an answer. And when uh, she got cancer, my world was tipped upside down, and and God spoke to me very clearly that uh, um, uh, I was being prideful and arrogant, and uh, when I was asking him, where are you, he was asking me the same question, and I and, uh, had my Job 38 moment where he said, where were you when I gave you this gift of medicine? So by the grace of God, Karen was healed, and um, through that I found uh, love and peace of Christ, and uh, he put uh, a fire in me for missions, and uh, short-term missions was, uh, was the, the uh, course and path that God took me on. So short-term missions, your, your involvement, me- medically specifically, mm-hmm. as you, using your talents, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, but those have changed over the years as Absolutely. far as your, your short-term medical missions. So could you share a little bit about what, that, what that's looked like? Absolutely. So short-term missions for me when I first started was the typical go-and-do missions where mm-hmm. uh, it was more about when people would say, asked me what I did and how I did it. I could easily tell them that. And that we saw sometimes, um, in one particular trip, we saw 5,000 patients in 10 days with a huge medical team. But the haunting question I kept getting asked was, why are you leaving when there's so many more to see? And lines after working 12 hours were still five, 600 people or more. So that started, and pridefully I would answer, well, we worked all day, we worked 12 hours. And I saw a thousand people and when I came home people were telling me how wonderful I was so again the pride and arrogance uh, was a struggle and then um, I began to, th- uh, to have situations where God was speaking to me with, with patience and I had one in particular where I was uh, working and uh, a mother and father handed me a baby that they said was sick and that was warm to touch, stopped breastfeeding and was making grunting noises and to my horror, when I opened up the, the blanket, the baby had died. And I, that was a turning point for me is what if, what if I was able to train someone to recognize that this baby was sick two days ago? And what if we were able to um, 
teach them how to clean wounds before and, and avoid infections. And so I started thinking, where, what is my impact? So I could tell you what I did, how I did it. And when I spoke to CMDA students, Christian medical dental students, they would tell me the same thing. But then I began to ask, well, uh, why did you go? And the question that or, or what God was pointing out to me is it was about me. And when you consider what God wants to do with us on the mission field, the why has to be about Him. So the why is in Christ. And where is Christ in my mission work? He wasn't to be found. It was all physical, meeting physical needs. Hmm. Spiritual needs were, were, were uh, aside. So I was doing humanitarian work when I was calling it missions. So with that, God was showing me, if I'm going to be in your mission work, what does that look like? And all answers... Uh, I have found her in Scripture. So I found uh, the Scripture of when John the Baptist asked um, um, his disciples to go ask Jesus, is he the one? And Jesus' answer was very profound to me. It was the lame walk, the blind see, uh, the lepers are healed, uh, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. So he used compassion and health care to preach the good news, and they had to go together, Christ's model. So then I thought, how does that, what does that look like on a short-term team, and, and, and will that be impactful? And it was very clear that we needed to start teaching those things that God was showing me. And we needed to teach it in such a simple way that, um, that it was easy to comprehend, and that we would take these pastors who are on the tip of the spear of Christianity in the hardest places and teach them basic medical skills to open the doors. So early on, the, the, the teaching books were terrible. They were very heavy in uh, physiology, menis- uh, or just uh, verbiage was too, was too much. And my wife was my editor because she doesn't have a medical background. She helped me with that. So we have simplified the message to focus on health and hygiene for germs, waterborne illness, wound and burn care, um, and then newborn care at birth and after birth. So that really targeted the majority mm. of health care needs uh, in the darkest places. So then um, with that, we created these, these modules, and then we said, so we need to be um, strategic in who we, we, come, we invite to be students. Mm-hmm. And pastors, we found, were not a good target audience because they were too busy and ne- never went anywhere. Uh, so we, th- we needed to target the, the evangelists who were out in the hardest places sharing the gospel. So we did that. And then the next step with our short-term strategic plan was, so who do we... Uh, So we're partnering with them, but where do we go in the world? And we decided to look at data that looked at where is the least access to health care, looking at infant mortality, maternal mortality. Um, And we found that if we lay that over the darkest spiritual places in the world, it pretty much hit the 1040 window. Hmm. So that's how we strategically said, this is where we're going to focus. We're not going to go to reached areas. We're going to the unreached. We're going to partner with organizations with the same like-minded idea of humility, not to be prideful about their uh, organizations. It's about working together for the kingdom. Christ gets the glory. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then it was targeting these students. And then uh, with that, have an exit strategy. How do we then exit out of an area, leaving this empowerment model behind? And it was to get the doctors in that area, Christian physicians on board, so that they would then create their own model of empowering and then we move to the next place, next organization. Wow, that's a, it's like taking a drink from a fire hydrant yeah. right there. Yeah. Sorry. So, was, no, you're fine. Yeah. I, I love that you're passionate about what you do. And um, so you were, I mean, an, an ER physician who got involved with medical mission trips, specifically the, the short-term clinics. Mm-hmm. You said you saw 5,000 patients? We saw 5,000 Actually, it was Southeast trip, uh, and we had a huge medical team, 24 people wow. we recruited to go. Um, and it was just working 12 hours, exhausted, going to the next place. And literally, when I came home, I was so proud of myself for seeing that many, but in the back of my mind was, was uh, where was Christ? What did I actually do? Because mm-hmm. I gave them medicine for their, their waterborne illness, but then they went right back and, and drank the same water. So wow. it was this... This I, Christ was uh, was chipping away at my view of what missions, and then I had great mentors. I had Steve Saint, Charlie Vitito, um, uh, who were 
who were starting on their empowering journey because of the lessons that Steve had, had learned. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Florence with a holistic approach through partnerships um, that you can't just target uh, a physical need and not link that to the gospel because our testimony l opens doors to the gospel. It's our, mm -hmm. it's our bridge to the gospel. So right. you have to know who you are. And when people come on our trips, I ask them their testimony. I mean, I want to know who you are and where are you coming from? Because if someone would have asked me that when I first started, it would have been pretty ugly. It would have been from obvious from what I was saying. It was about me. It was pride. Hmm. And, and where is Christ going to be in this mission trip and prepare you to go and, and have this mindset and not be about you? It's not going to be about your comfort. It's not going to be about what you get out of it. It's going to be about empowering these people. And then the benefit of that is the joy of, of doing that. You hear courageous evangelists who are tip of the spear people in the hardest places of the world. It's humble. It truly is Hebrews 11. They are mm -hmm. heroes of the faith. They are, are so passionate about it, they would take persecution at every level all the way to death because they are, they are that passionate. And many of the Muslims that I've spoke to that are humbling to me, uh, they see visions of Christ in dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, and they sh I've heard story after story like this, and it is, these are the people we're trying to give that gift to. Hmm. because they're the ones reaching out and they are relentless and that's not me I mean I, I am very passionate about short-term teams but I don't know the language I don't know the culture I make many mistakes culturally so it's a just a it's a no-brainer is that is who we need to empower and I think the key you know is is knowing you know your role and missions and you know I love hearing your story you know we, you shared it with me before and how this journey, you know, it, it wasn't something that was just a quick shift, but it's yeah. it's been a process that's led led to starting an organization, Teach mm -hmm. to Transform, mm -hmm. and trying to work with other people to encourage um, in short-term mission efforts rather than going and setting up a huge clinic, focus on training yeah. nationals. And, right. and just like you, you mentioned, this process of learning, you tried with pastors, but Everybody yeah. knows pastors, you know, just yeah. they're busy. They're, they're the, the go-to people. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, this journey of learning who to train and training yeah. evangelists, it's, it's amazing. So. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and we learn, too, that the pastors need to be involved because uh, we want to empower the church. Mm -hmm. So when there is a church available, no one gets our medical uh, backpacks and all the, the supplies that goes to the church. Okay. So sustainability piece is the church. Well, hold on, hold on a second. Now, everybody isn't familiar necessarily with with backpacks and everything okay. else. So, so maybe briefly share what this what a training. Looks yeah, like. yeah. So you went from this this clinic model where you you know set up a medical professionals. You said maybe twenty four yeah. and see yeah. five thousand people down to take that same amount of time and now you're focused on training. So what would that look like? So a typical training would look, first we vet our partners like we're talking about, make sure uh, where we're going, the student audience is correct. We do a vision preparation piece of that so that we're all equally, equally yoked. And then once we, we know where we're going, uh, we get a team of about eight to 10, uh, much smaller, uh, who are, uh, work with us and, and know our modules. And, and the process is we do a V, uh, via a vision and preparation, if you were to sit in one of those, the next step would then you would come on a trip and be a table leader. And then from there, the next trip you would be in front of the class. So there's a couple of, uh, there's a process to become comfortable in what we do. But the training would look like um, in a five day class, we, we train, we have teaching books that we have um, a curriculum committee that's looked at over the last 10 years. Uh, young people, graphic designers, uh, cleaned up all the mistakes I was making, different fonts and everything else. So, so we now have these specific modules we review every year to make sure that uh, information is accurate. It's on uh, health and hygiene, which is hand washing, simple techniques that we teach lay, path, lay evangelists how to go into communities. Talks about germ theory, washing your hands, how germs are transmitted, and we have skits we do. Um, and then um, we teach about uh, waterborne illness wound and burn care and there's little books and so there's blocks that we teach these things mm. and then newborn care at birth and newborn care after birth and then vital signs which is your blood pressure pulse respirations etc so in in that comes we identify typically in this group of 50 that we normally train there'll be 15 churches setting representatives they're mm. evangelists 
So we found that we used to give the back the medical bag with a blood pressure cuff, a stethoscope, thermometer, and a pulse oximeter, uh, and the teaching books inside, uh, and some wound care supplies. Uh, we used to give it to the pastor, and we found uh, it went nowhere. Hmm. That they would use it for, as a job to create money. We couldn't get them to come back to training, so that didn't work. So we said we have to empower the church. So now it belongs to the church. If you if you um, go through our training and you take a test at the end of that five days, and we identify you as a trainer of trainers, then you get a star on your diploma and you'll be able, able to go into the church, check out the bag, as opposed to someone who didn't quite get to that level, he gets a certificate, but he has to be with one who is a trainer. Mm -hmm. So they go out two by two. So he can't go to the church because we didn't feel he was ready. Uh, the starred person goes in and takes the bag out with, with someone else and then they go in the community and they serve. At the end of that, uh, so through that five day process, we, we have a, um, a test at the end. We determine who are the trainers so that the next time we come in, our teams are smaller, four or five with more of their trainers, and then it propagates and multiplies itself um, and it opens doors for the gospel. So in the course of a week, rather than going and, and seeing a thousand patients, uh, 5,000, mm -hmm. you know, okay. as a whole, you're training, you know, local evangelists to be able to provide medical care and it's a door opener for the gospel and you know stories of you know child you know that got to the point to where they you know died the story you, yes. you just shared would, yeah. would hopefully not happen as frequently because the church would be able to provide that care and sustainability so they have to if if we give them dressings the next thing they do is they figure out how do we replace this so we cut up strips of cloth and so within the kind of community health evangelism model solve these problems of how you're going to replenish the backpack if you need okay. batteries sure. blood pressure day at the church people donate to it the other right. thing we do do uh, is the metrics so we follow mm -hmm. government persecution uh, evangelical um, impact and then the medical and the medical helps guide us as to the next things do they need a model a module on malaria or whatever that looks like wow so there's so but there, and there's other to make it other thing clear we're not providing medicines so there's no there's no uh, fear of getting into situations where mm. they make it into trouble uh, we're turning the the title they get is a healthcare screener they mm. identify you've got blood pressure they identify that you've got a, a baby that's sick they identify you've got an infected wound okay and refer to the clinics and we try and incorporate the clinics when we go so that they right. know what our what our people do so, so there's no persecution from the government saying you're right. trying to be something you're not so they're trying to identify maybe screen. some yeah some issues triage in the field exactly and then point them to get more care but the pledge they take is it is not about the medical and we remind mm. them day after day it is not about the medical it is about sharing the gospel Amen. this is a door opener yeah. for that so you are not we have them say a pledge you're not a doctor right uh you are an evangelist who is uh, who's learned the, these skills so that we can open doors to share the gospel right and that's the pledge they take at the end and then they report back to us metrics so we know the impact they're having and, and strategically locate the next village we're going to do the big training in. Right. So wow. So, our role, so three years from now, they don't know Dr. Tom, they don't know Teach to Transform, but they know their, their pastor who's, or their evangelist who's brought them to Jesus Christ through this health care with compassion. Amen. Amen. So, but today, how would somebody find more information about the work you're doing or maybe they're interested in learning more about getting involved? Yeah. So I would say first, you'd want to go to our website, teachatransform.org. Uh, that way you'll contact someone and we'll set up a, a, a phone call about relationships with Zooms. We Zoom a lot around the world uh, to hear uh, what your vision would be for this, what you think it is. And then we prepare to come to your church or organization and do a vision casting. And with that, uh, I'm hoping some of these um, iTech uh, technology here will help us with video to show um, the power of partnerships and training. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do a VIP and then from there the next step would be come on a trip with us um, and see what, because this, the vision preparation is nothing like the field. Right. You know, you got generators, cows walking, so we want them to come with us, see how it's done, watch how you work with translators and do that piece of it and then the next step would be to become an instructor in front of the class and then if you're comfortable enough to lead a team and then eventually an exit strategy to your church your organization takes you can have everything and you go right on well great well thank you so much for joining okay. us today 
And uh, thank you for joining us. And if you want to learn more about Tom and Teach to Transform, please visit the website. You said it was Teach to Transform. Dot .org. Okay, Teach to Transform. .org. So please visit that and uh, learn more about them. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll look forward to you uh, joining us again. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Mission Minded. For more information on today's topic and show notes, please visit our website, itechusa.org.